can see we're back at the shop we've moved the bmw out of my garage over here kind of got to the point where i didn't want to try to put motor and trans in in my garage it's just too much work i gotta move the engine hoist i gotta move the engine uh engine stand transmission basically everything i had here i'd have to take back to the shop so we loaded the car up brought it over here mike and i actually started on this thing last night but uh when you're putting one of these in if you're going to do a manual transmission you know you got to remember to do a pilot bearing and i didn't have one and when you do a t56 um you need the little one so th there's two styles this is the little bitty guy this is the actual gm part number um i got this one from advanced auto parts ct 1078 is the number that they use but when you do a t56 it needs to seat in this smaller one when you do a tr6060 it seats here you cannot use a tr6060 one with a t56 because what happens is the input is slightly longer and it will bottom out in this big bearing and you'll have like a quarter inch gap on your bell housing and uh, if you try to force it you'll break some shit so we're gonna throw this in get the clutch on and then um be ready to put the motor and trans in the car Go down. There you go. You were fishing out of that swamp. That easy, champion. Just like that, you're probably worth 20 grand. <laughs> Alright, but as you see behind me, we made some really good progress. Uh, motor and trans is in. Everything's kind of loosely bolted up. The drive is just kind of chilling here. Got all the fuel done. Everything has been leak tested. Had to get some injector hats. Um, for my LS3 height injectors with this LS2 intake. We got those in. Probably gonna recover some of these because I don't like these wires being this visible. But in terms of like the harness landing, it ended up working out really nice. I do have to cut this off and put a Gen 4 on here because we're gonna run an LS9 map sensor. Um, we're gonna try to fire it tonight. Mike's on his way. We need to put some need to put some plugs in it. Uh, Frank has his uh ls3 manifolds laying around here somewhere so we're gonna put those on just so it has something on it um i've got plug wires starter and everything the exciter is wired i do need to make a big wire for power down to the starter um besides that we're pretty good fuel's ready to go so really just want to get this thing cranked and make sure the engine's good has good oil pressure no funny noises it's already got oil in it it's got a filter on it so just a couple small things and and we can see what this thing's gonna do so let's get started
right, so injectors are in. We got plugs in it, manifolds on it, plug wires on it, everything. Sensors are hooked up. Mike's working on some tune. We're going to just use some jumper cables for now to give the starter power. You know what we should do right now? What's up? Record pre start poly checklist. I can do it real quick. Knock yourself out. Yeah. We're getting ready to uh, fire up Garrett's car. First thing we need to do, um, we made a base map for this car. Um, so first time you flash a tune into this, uh, you may get a message that says this, TPS auto set needs to be performed. So we're gonna go ahead and send this file to the car. When you first send a new file to the car um, and it gives you that message, you need to key it off first and key it back on. Um, so we're going to do a TPS auto set, so Garrett's going to do the pedal, come up here in the software, TPS auto set, kind of hard to read this on the screen here. So we're going to click uh, start here and we're going to press the pedal two times all the way down, um, about a second, you don't have to go super slow, I know it says slowly, about a second down, second up, hit start, go ahead. Okay, hit done. Successful. Okay, so you guys new to Holly, some things you need to look at. Um, you need to make sure that your sensors are reading correctly. So when you set up your map sensor, um, your coolant temperature sensor, all this stuff, like here, for example, this 125 kPa on our map, that is not right. It's not 125 kPa key off, so obviously we have something wrong here. So I'm gonna go to offline, sensors. We're gonna go to our map sensor. We just clicked a random one bar here because I don't know what we have. I'm gonna try the other one. Send that to the ECU. Key the car on and off. New sensor. Map still reading incorrectly. Sensors, map sensor, one bar, yes, send. Still wrong. <laughs> Was it read? Is it, is it changing? Or? No, it's then, well, now it's reading 126 kPa. So what a. I don't have that part number in here. Let me put it as a Holly one bar and see what it does. Send ECU. So one thing you can do if you don't have a good data on the map sensor you're using, um, you can use the internal, the blue hose on the Holly. Okay, here we go. 100 and 103 kPa. That sounds reasonable. Um, Coolant temperature sensor, mat, uh, manifold air temperature sensor, everything reading correctly. Uh, yeah, Sierra Barrow is reading 103. That's built into the Holly, so that should match the uh, map sensor. So yeah, 103 TPS is reading. So you wanna make sure that stuff is reading before you go to start it. Um, we went through and made a base map, put a, put a spark table in here that makes sense, a fuel table. Make sure that your um, configuration for your engine size and everything like that is correct engine parameters make sure your size make sure it's eight cylinders the correct injector don't try to start this thing on the wrong injector data you're just screwing yourself so but the main thing takeaway is make sure your sensors are reading right before you try to start anything if this map sensor says 100 and then you go to crank it and it doesn't change it's still 100 uh, you have it hooked or configured as the wrong sensor, so fix that before you run the car. So we're gonna go ahead and try to fire this thing up now. Okay, go ahead.
All right, guys, so big update, jumping way ahead. You saw we had the first fire up. Car has good oil pressure, runs good, doesn't make any noises. It is loud. It's just open fifth gen manifolds, but everything seems okay with that. So now we're moving on to getting this pro charger in here. We got the bracket that Mike made before. Everything's bolted up. Um, no spacers back here yet. This is kind of just chilling here, but everything's tight. Got the fan trimmed. Um, probably going to try to do a little bit more, at least clean some of this up. It's a really tight fit down in here. Hold on, let me try to shed some light on this. So it's a really tight fit with the fan here. It's, it's hard to see this, but essentially the, the outlet on the compressor cover is freaking in the fan. Um, it barely clears. It does work. We may figure out something. <clears throat> we may figure out something different, but for right now, that seems to work. I actually got a factory 335i uh, lower radiator hose because I think this is going to work well because we're using a factory style uh, 335 intercooler. So this is the VRSF. This is the 850 horsepower rated unit, seven and a half inches thick. Real fast shipping on that thing. Really nice piece. Pretty happy with it. Um, it's going to be like hardly anything to make this connection here. I'll raise the car up here in a little bit. This one here probably needs like a 45 degree, three inch silicone, and we could make that work. This one here, we just literally 90 straight up. Um, there's nothing that's going to be right here over into the intake manifold. Super easy. Um, man, besides that, we're looking pretty good. I do need to make the wire that runs over to the alternator. A um, couple of small things. I did get this hose because this is a 335i um, hose and the pump, the bracket on them is a little bit different. There's some changes to them. Uh, I got this hose that I need to swap this for. I already cut the return one and made it just real sharp and simple. Works well. I bought these blue streak wires, but now that I see them here, they're just too long. Uh, I don't really like them. So we're probably going to just put some MSDs on it and call it good fuel system so now that it's on the lift it's a lot easier to kind of show you everything one of the one of the problems we've been running into is we've been using the radium drop-ins um, that just replace the driver's side hat in the stock tank and it seems like we're running into into an issue with uh, maxing them out essentially we're gonna find out for sure on Frank's car um, We'll probably do an update video on this and a little dyno video on it, but just the quick and dirty of it is that Frank now has Mike's old turbo kit. So this is the original OG kit with the big flat spotted turbo. This is the same setup that went uh, 880s. Uh, Frank has a 4080 in this car. So incredibly dirty, white car life. Uh, so we're gonna see what it does. Uh, he had a few bugs to work through, had some little things wrong, and this car actually had caught fire. It blew the transmission dipstick out of it and sprayed trans fluid all over the, the old turbo hot side and actually caught fire. Thankfully, right out here in the parking lot, we were able to put it out, but it did burn some wires and he had to fix them. But we're going to see how much power this car will make because he has the radium drop in. And it's, uh, I think he's got two 450s in it. And that should be good for a lot of power normally. So we're going to find out if there's a restriction in the radium st setup or restriction in the factory lines, and then we're going to fix it. And, you know, or if there even is a restriction, but I had bought a kit for this car, brand new radium, ended up not using it. And what I ended up doing was came over here and we just tapped the tank. So this is two half inch NPT fittings one of them is a dash six for the return one is a dash eight for a feed and you can see i looped them up and over and then used some cushion clamps got everything nice tried to keep it with the factory uh factory fuel lines now the factory system is still intact and everything is still working the ekp is still operating everything's still functioning i haven't bypassed anything i did accidentally cut my damn line i was trying to trim these little plastic clips right here so that it would hold this dash six and slipped and cut right through my line so i had to do a little rigged up patch it works it's not leaking and then the main heart of the dash eight system is this aem 380 which i got from our buddy jimmy 
Uh, this is actually what comes in like the ECS East Coast Supercharging uh, Stage 1 Fuel Kit for a C6 Corvette. It's an external add-on. That's kind of where Mike and I got this idea because Mike did the same thing on the OG car, except he has a MagnaFuel 750 here instead of this pump. And this pump with a stock Corvette pump, we made like 800 and... 50 ish horsepower to the tire through a manual so this is more than than a, than sufficient for what i need got a uh, 30 micron filter after it all of this stuff is evil energy too by the way if you're looking for quality line and fittings we've had zero issues with this stuff if you put it together correctly it doesn't leak uh we've never had the lines mess up or do anything weird so really good stuff you can get it on amazon it's honestly doubled in price since we started using it I, you know, it could be because of supply and demand. It could just be because everyone started buying it and they realized they could charge more. I don't know. But so anyways, the Dash 8 runs up. Everything's nice and tucked along the frame rail. And it goes, I'll show you the top side in a minute, but it goes up there and it tees in with the factory line. So here's the factory line running in its, in its factory place. It comes here, it is converted to an AN, and then it goes up. Now, the only issue I've run into is I ran this stuff in my garage, no motor, trans in the car we didn't know where it would end up sitting eventually this car is getting a set of two inch primary headers but these c5 manifold or uh, sorry fifth gen camaro manifolds are what's in here for now but as you can see my my stock feed that's converted to an is literally just on this this uh flange right here so what i'm gonna probably end up doing is instead of this straight i might remake this line uh and do a 45 and kick it to the frame rail sooner and I'll come in here, I'll pull the manifold back out and I'll put some cushion clamps to hold it away so nothing gets torn up from the heat. But that goes all to the top. And then up here, uh, you can see there's an external regulator. Now the in-tank regulator is still there. It's still working perfectly fine. But then I have this MagnaFuel regulator and a feed in return. So we'll lower the car down here in a second, take a look at that. So another thing we did here, people always ask where can you put your flex fuel sensor. So you have a lot of slack on that sensor and it depends, or the, the wiring harness. So this is the sloppy mechanics uh, alternator and flex. And I have it run down to the frame rail and I'm actually just going to put my sensor in the return line and then mount it to the bottom of the car. And then this will plug in here. And that keeps that out of your engine bay. It's a much cleaner look. It's down here, it's in the return line. You know, it's it works. It works really well. Finishing up the fuel, you can see, you can see the T fitting, sort of. You can see the T right here. It's just the, the Dash 6 90s in, that's the factory. And then I have the Dash 8 coming straight up. Goes to a Dash 6 into the LS3 fuel rails. I need to change this out. This is all I had laying around to make this connection, but I have some of the, the threaded back ones. Um, these are very, very dangerous. That plastic can fail, it can pop loose, they can leak, and you can have a fire real fast. So this was used as a temporary solution, but I do have uh, the, the really the good ones. So I bought three of them. I got two for the flex fuel sensor and then one to replace that one. And then you just take the Schrader valve out of the front of your rails and buy this conversion. This is a dash four to dash six conversion and then return into the regulator. This is set right now at about 50 pounds and it does perfect. It doesn't care that the factory regulator is in the tank. It just does its job. So this returns back. It has a uh, dash six all the way to the back. You saw that was the second NPT that's tapped into the tank. Everything works mint. So it's probably gonna be it for this little update video. Um, so every, I mean, Got quite a bit done. Fuel system's done, all the wiring's done, motor and trans are in the car. Intercooler's on, blower's on, we're doing some fitment stuff. Blower's not 100% on, but we've got it on, we're mocking things up, figuring out um, what we need to cut on the fan. New radiator is in. I do have a new uh, AC condenser on the way. I think in the next video, um, hopefully we can get the blower, hopefully we can get the blower 100% and do a very minor fab work needed to for the cold side to make that thing work so we'll try to get that done um need to get a drive shaft ordered once we get everything centered that was a big thing too is we had to figure out where the motor was going to sit before we could do the drive shaft so i think we've kind of got that situated so um we're going to decide what we're going to do for exhaust uh we'll get a drive shaft made get the blower done 
100%, um, get the shifter done so I can put the interior back together. And I mean, we'll be real close. So, I mean, the goal was to have this car ready to go to LS Fest, Texas, which is June. It seems like we're gonna be done way ahead of that as long as we don't have any, any problems. <laughs>